My name is Tim Hartner. I'm the retired pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Weston, Florida. Weston is a suburb of Estero <laughs> on, the, on the other side of the state. Actually, um, it's, it, it's wonderful to be here. First of all, John Roth is one of my dear clergy buddies, and I've known John for almost 30 years. Um, you all are so fortunate to have one of the finest teacher, preacher, proclaimers of God's good news, in my humble opinion, in the Florida Georgia District of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Senate. And um, John just, he's a great theologian, and uh, so what a blessing. And over this last year of uh, virtual things on Sunday morning, my wife Lori and I have joined you all uh, on a pretty regular basis. We do a little bit of channel surfing, you know. We got a church over here and church over, and if you don't like what this guy's saying, you can hit the mute button. Uh, and, uh, but John is like my wife's favorite preacher, so I don't even know if she's watching today with me here, you know, but um, she makes sure that we tune in on, on John, and, and what a blessing that is. Um, I'll say that I'm kind of an old school guy, so when John had informed me that he and Lisa hadn't had a weekend away in umpteen, you know, amount of time, I said, get something on the calendar, and I'm going to drive over there and cover for you, and uh, you have a weekend away with your, with your wife. And he said, uh, you know, okay. Um, I said, how do you want me to show up? He says, well, why don't you just kind of do what I do? So... I tend to be like a clerical collar guy, you know, with the robes and, and all that. Uh, I don't know that I've ever preached in my Valpo shirt before, polo shirt, but so that's kind of fun for me. And to show you, I am really old school, contrary to John Roth with his, you know, gizmo pad that he always uses. Um, I don't know if at some point John's going to watch this, but... Uh, John, this is a piece of paper, <laughs> you know, and a pen, and you write out thoughts on the paper and pen. So that might be kind of a novel thing for him. <laughs> Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, when I uh, offered to cover for John, maybe I should have checked out what series he was going to be doing, and he informed me that after uh, Easter Sunday, during the season of Easter, he was going to be reflecting on the, on the book of Acts, and the date that I would be here would be Acts chapter 4. So uh, looking around that chapter, there's a word that jumped out at me, and the word is boldness. Boldness. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak, not to teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. 
And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal. And signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. As I uh, tuned in to Pastor John last Sunday, he's done a good job of putting the book of Acts in context. John likes that expression of how the book of Acts records the gospel exploding <laughs> into that first century world. Just a reminder to you, when we're reading the book of Acts, remember Luke, the evangelist, was the author of what we now call the Gospel of Luke and Acts, two works of his that made it into the New Testament under the inspiration of the Spirit. Luke, Acts, probably written, scholars tell us, around 80 A.D. So the events they're describing happen some 30, 40 years earlier. This day, I kind of like paying attention to some of these kind of things. Mar uh, uh, what month are we in? April. April 25th on the Christian calendar is St. Mark Day. And Mark's gospel, again, the Seminary folk tell us was probably written about 10 years before Luke was. But both of those gospels describe and are addressed to people who were facing persecution. Those early Christians for whom a great deal of boldness was necessary, was called for in living out their faith. So that's where we're going to be going these next minutes as we reflect on that word boldness. Peter and John prayed, grant your servants, Lord, to speak your word with all boldness. And the place they were standing, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Sometimes as we try to wrap our arms around what something like boldness is, it might help us to reflect for a moment on what it is not. Boldness is not the same as uh, what our Jewish friends and neighbors refer to as chutzpah. <laughs> Neither is it um, the courage that our college kids try to conjure up when they're trying to work up the nerve to ask someone out for a date, although that takes a little boldness, doesn't it? Neither is it something you learn in the uh, assertiveness training class. No, for us in this setting, boldness grows out of God's great, bold act. Before the foundation of the world, God's bold act on how he would save and redeem and so love the world that he would give his one and only son. Now there's boldness. Born in Bethlehem. All the way, God's son, all the way into our world, sharing our humanity in all of its fullness. And that's always one of the great things about our faith, isn't it? The great humanity 
of our Savior. There's nothing we go through that Christ has not been there first. And Jesus' bold ministry for three years of healing and teaching and proclaiming and finally, that great, bold act of love that took him to the cross. Crucified, died, and buried. And there on that cross, as St. Paul tells us, he who had no sin became sin for us so we might become the righteousness of God. I like to refer to that as the sweet swap of the gospel. All that we are in our sinfulness and brokenness, Jesus took all that on himself on the cross. And all that he is as God's beloved son, he now imparts, bestows, gives to you and to me and to all believers. How's that for boldness? And then in the great ultimate bold act of all on Easter morning, God reached in to that place of death. And Jesus got up out of that grave. And as he came, the announcement went out that he is risen indeed. And now, by God's grace, through faith in Christ alone, we have life, new life, forgiven life, eternal life, abundant life. Nothing puny about all that, is there? That was big, God's plan of salvation. That was bold. And that's what makes us now God's bold sons and daughters. And that's why Peter and John and all of those folk in the book of Acts did what they did with such boldness. Let's face it, we can use a little bit of that Easter boldness, can't we? We all tend to view ourselves. I'm guessing this is true for you folks over here on the west coast of Florida. You look like most of the good Lutheran folk that I spent 42 years looking at from a pulpit. But we... We tend to consider ourselves good middle class, respectable folk, careful about our religion. We've all probably experienced somewhere along the line some kind of religious imperialism from well-meaning fellow believers who end up kind of bludgeoning us or others with Jesus. And might even think to ourselves, well, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to be like that. But what can sneak up on us? What can creep up on us? Is a failure then to speak of our faith ever. Afraid that we are in some way going to cross a line, offend somebody. And we end up drawing back. End up being so timid that the saving word of Jesus that Peter and John were so bold in sharing that that saving word never crosses our lips or escapes our mouths. It doesn't require a whole lot of boldness 
to show up here on a Sunday morning, does it? Require some things. Thank God for that. You're here. But boldness probably isn't one of them. No, boldness is part of our Monday to Saturday world. Where God gives us the opportunities, where the Holy Spirit creates the moments. I like to call it witnessing over a chicken sandwich at 1 o'clock on Thursday afternoon. You've all probably been there, haven't you? And those are the times and settings. People don't like to talk to folk like me who wear funny looking shirts with little white collars and all that kind of stuff. But they do talk to you about what's on their heart and mind as they ask questions and maybe struggle with this life of faith. That's why be bold. Be ready. That's the way 1 Peter puts it. Always be ready to give reason for the hope that's in you and to do that with gentleness and love and reverence. Boldness. I jotted down some other places for some Easter boldness. See if any of these connect with you. Be bold in seeing the image of God in all people, especially in those that are not in your image. Be bold in seeing the image of God in all people, especially those who are not in your image. As we think about our world, our nation, you think we could use a little bit of that, seeing the image of God in others? Those early Christians in the book of Acts broke down barriers for that gospel to go from their neighborhood into the nations as they were called to be witnesses in Jerusalem, locally, in Estero, in Judea, which would be state of Florida, in Samaria, which would be across racial lines, to the very ends of the earth, That took some boldness. That took some boldness. Be bold in caring for God's creation. We just had an Earth Day reminder this past week, didn't we? We Floridians on both the west coast of Florida and the east coast of Florida, we've got some work to do. Remembering that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It's not ours. We're the managers in the absence of the owner. We're stewards Bold in caring for God's creation. Always mindful that this is part of what we will pass on also to those who come after us. Be bold. Be bold in being the hands and feet and heart of the risen Lord in the world. I told Mark, Valpo grad Mark, that my wife and I, during the season of Lent, took a class with one of the Zoom class with one of the theology profs at Valparaiso University on Jesus and the Gospels. 
But as uh, Professor Needner was talking about the Easter narratives in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he said, each one of those Gospels in some way seeks to answer the questions that people had that if Christ is risen, then where is he? And what's he doing? And the answer in those Gospels is, where is he? He's in you. <laughs> and you. And me. And you folk watching this on TV. We are his hands, his feet. We are the heart of the risen Lord out in the world. And what's that risen Lord doing? Working through your hands and feet and heart to bless this world God continues to still so love. One of the preachers, Lori and I, were Sunday morning surfing a few weeks ago. This was so good, I ran and wrote it down. <laughs> but he challenged his congregation with these words. Find something in the world that breaks your heart. Then do something about it. That's pretty good, isn't it? Find something in the world that breaks your heart and then do something about it. As you are the hands, the feet, the heart of our living Lord Jesus. Wyatt, how long have I been preaching? Who knows? I, t I told John Roth, I probably am not going to preach as long as you do, but I don't know. I should have looked at my watch before I got started. One last thought. Wyatt, would you shoot that last scripture passage up there for us? This is at the end of chapter 4. Since John gave me chapter 4 as my assignment, I wanted to touch on this too, because this is one of my favorite pieces of the book of Acts comes at the very end of that chapter. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold the field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. I am a huge fan of Barnabas. For one thing, I love the meaning of his name. Son of encouragement. Interestingly, later in the book of Acts, we're told about Barnabas he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Barnabas is the only person that the New Testament calls a good man. Isn't that interesting? Because he was an encourager. I have a hunch if your world is like mine, your world can use some more sons of encouragement. 
daughters of encouragement. Is that one of the things we've learned going through this last year? There's a whole lot of people out in our world who need encouraging. You rub elbows with them all the time. Some of those folks that we were reminded that so often are invisible to us. Boy, what a word of encouragement we can give those truck drivers and grocery store stocking people and the mail delivery folk and the vaccine people who stand out in those lines in the sun and keep track of who's getting vaccines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and healthcare workers. Be an encourager. Be a Barnabas encourager, not a discourager. Be a benediction for people. Be a benediction. Don't just listen to the words of a benediction, but be a benediction. Be a blessing. What an encouragement that is for folks. Make life easier, never harder for those around you. Try that one on. Make life easier, never harder. Your home, your church, your place of employment, your neighborhood. Be bold in doing all that. People of Thrive, keep thriving. Be thankful, gracious receivers of God's bold gift of salvation. And be bold in all the ways you keep that blessing moving. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, if I wrote this down, we pray now. Is that right? Is that correct? Okay. Is that correct, Hunter? I, like the, I felt like I knew Hunter before I got here. Just all the way, John always has this dialogue going with Hunter. And those of us watching on screen, you never quite know who Hunter is, but you just guess that there is a real live Hunter. And I got to meet him this morning, so that's good. Let's pray. Gracious, loving, bold, heavenly Father, we thank you for your bold gospel of grace. Make us bold in trusting that good news. Work your Holy Spirit's gift of Acts, apostolic, Easter boldness. Help us to boldly give reason for the hope that's in us. Help us boldly to see the image of God in other people. Help us boldly to care for your creation. Help us boldly to be your hands and your feet and your heart out there in the world you love. Make us bold as sons and daughters of encouragement because there's so much that's discouraging out in our world. So help us to get out of our world out of ourselves. Help us to let our light so shine before others that they see who we are and what we do and what we say and give glory to you, our Father in heaven. In this time of prayer, Heavenly Father, we also lift to you the sick and the grieving, people who are anxious, people traveling who need your protective mercies, people we know and people we name now in the silence of our hearts. Thank you for life. Thank you for the life we share 
here at Thrive Community Church relationships that bless these good people that they want to share with your world out there as they commit boldly again to be your hands, your feet, your heart, your love for the world. We pray all this in the bold name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.